I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the July 2021 Chemnitz Dialong livestream where we dyed yarn inspired by watermelon. Watermelon as an inspiration has been one of the most highly requested inspiration themes and I had so much fun creating many colorways inspired by this photo on the live stream and a couple that I did the next day. Before the live stream started, I swatched a number of greens, reds, and pinks to help me narrow down the colors that I most wanted, the tones I most wanted for my watermelon. Swatching with dry powder like this is a crude way to see how the colors compare to one another. And so then I picked a few to make up stock solutions. But here is a labeled swatch of all of these colors I looked at so you can compare them to one another. I didn't do much at all to this finished yarn. Uh, I loved the way the colors went through already and it feels very, very abstract watermelony, even without any black. During the live stream itself, I used this skein to swatch the liquid dyes to make sure that I had them as intense or as dilute as I wanted them before dyeing the yarn. And then at the end, I added some black patches to add some seeds this time to this abstract watermelon. And before we get to the watermelon mini skate fade set, here is a yarn mop that I used as I was making up my dye stocks. And I wiped dry powder onto here. And so there's not a lot of color, but it's really bright and fun and feels very, very Florida to me. Before the live stream, I sketched out a few different ideas before settling on this idea for a five mini skein fade set where we go from the rind to the fruit. I am so happy with how this turned out. I dyed things in two pans. These two colorways were in one pan and these three were in another for a total of 500 grams. And I think if I weren't doing this in a live stream, I probably would have done five separate pans, but it worked and it worked really, really well. The colors I ended up using in here were poinsettia, flamingo pink, and pink orchid, and then some sour apple, chartreuse, and forest green for the rind. And then for that second color that is mostly white, I used little bits of all of them to be those little bits of color that you see through when you've almost finished your watermelon slice and you're trying to get every last bit of pink before getting to the rind. I love how this turned out so much that the morning after the stream, I went and dyed up three colorways on full skeins. Rind, seedless, and I guess the, sp the seeded one would just be watermelon. Let me go show you how I did that. I loved the quote rind colorway that I created so much on the mini skeins that I decided to dye some up using 300 grams of Knit Picks Hawthorne fingering weight yarn. This yarn is 80% superwash fine highland wool, 20% polyamid, and I'm gonna be using this for all of these bonuses that I'm dyeing as full skeins. And so on this, I layered on some of the chartreuse, sour apple, and forest green to create more of this watermelon rind colorway. I also wanted to dye up some more of the watermelon flesh, the fruit part of the watermelon, really going for that pink and red colorway that was more of that medium color that I had dyed uh, with our five skein mini skein set. I dyed six skeins in this colorway, starting layering the red and the pinks, but then I kept some of this as is for a more quote, seedless colorway. And then with the other three, I added some drops of the 1% black stock solution to create the watermelon seeds. So we could have two versions, one with black, one without, because honestly, I love this colorway both ways. Once I added the little, quote, seeds, I then steam set that yarn for 20 to 30 minutes in a steamer basket. And then I washed everything off camera and I will include this in with our conclusions. And so these three colors make an awesome set as well. As someone commented during the stream, 
using this as like a circular shawl with like the green on the outside and the reds towards the middle would be really, really fun. <laughs> Which version is your favorite? I am so, so proud of this mini set. I think a lot of times I focus on getting a fade where there's good transitions between each of the colors. And there isn't like that easy transition because of the inspiration. And I think that this set fits that watermelon slice so beautifully. I, used to, I was really inspired, so I dyed a lot. Uh, on Wool to Dye For's Zebra Base, this one is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. I used a combination of pink orchid, a chartreuse, and a tiny bit of sour apple to create this easygoing but fun colorway. I wanted to let the black and white plies from this two-ply yarn really shine through on a brighter, more neon colorway. And honestly, I'm surprised I went for chartreuse and pink orchid over fluorescent fuchsia and radioactive, but I wanted something that was still bright, but it does actually feel pretty neon. So I, I don't know, I'm really happy with it. Since this yarn is non-superwash, it does take a while for colors to absorb. So I added the color, heated it, and then let it cool overnight. And when I flipped it over, the color had penetrated so well that I did not need to add any other color to the other side. And so I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Finally, I took all of the leftover dye from dyeing all of those other skeins and combined it on this skein of Provincial Tweed from Knit Picks. This color feels more black cherry versus watermelon, but is still very, very beautiful. The one thing I'm disappointed by is that the color that we ended up getting is so close to the color of the purple neps. So the yellow neps do show up really nicely, but the other ones just sort of blend in. So. I'm glad that I dyed this. I had fun dyeing this, but I wish that I had dyed it, say, a brighter red, so then those other, the neps could have popped a bit more. Phew! <laughs> this is all the yarn that I dyed for the July Chemnitz dye along. And now it's time to take a look at all of the watermelon inspired yarn you created. Did you go for fade sets? Did you do still striping or gradient? It was so fun to see all of these watermelon variations on Instagram and Facebook. If you would like to be potentially featured in one of these recaps going forward, share the yarn that you dyed inspired by the inspiration photo on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialong or on Facebook in a comment on the inspiration photo. And I'll pull as many as I can to include in these recaps because I think it is so fun to see how similar and different our colorways are when we all start with one photo. And granted, I invite you to try to replicate my results, my techniques, my recipes. That is something that as a teacher, I welcome. But even so, there is a lot of similarity, yes, in the inspiration, but also there are a lot of differences. And so I think it's really beautiful to see that. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you love these dialogues or love watching me dye yarn, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a live stream or a new video. I try to schedule the streams in advance, uh, but there are some times where I set things up a little more last minute and you don't want to miss out on the fun. If you would like another way to help support the content here, uh, I do have a Patreon and an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations. 99% of the yarn that I dye in my videos ends up in my Etsy shop. And while uh, I can't guarantee that all of this watermelon yarn is still available, there are likely some of these skeins available in the shop. So you should go and check it out. There's links to everything down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.